Thanks for tuning into Dirty Teeth and welcome back to the channel. As of right now, Salsa Cycles has officially joined the e-bike game. We knew it had to be coming at some point and I'm actually surprised they didn't do it earlier. It seems like they wanted to take their time to get it right. Did they? Well, we'll find out. Today I'll run you through all the specs and prices and geeky details of the first e-bike they're bringing to market. And I'm assuming there's going to be some more interesting news coming real soon. Just saying. Anywho, they chose to launch a kind of do-all, gravel, commuter-style bike. This is the all-new Salsa Confluence. I don't know about you, but I dig the name. Confluence, a junction or flowing together of two rivers. Okay, so who's this bike for and what's it all about? As I just mentioned, the Confluence is being marketed as an entry-level, versatile, gravel-slash-all-road bike. It should be appealing to riders of all skill levels, including commuters and those that want to explore off the beaten path. If you're familiar with the Salsa Journeyer, the Confluence is basically that bike, but with an electric motor and battery hidden carefully inside. The goal is to get more people on bikes and give them that little nudge they might need to get out there and make some adventures. When you look at the Confluence, you really can't tell it's an e-bike unless you've got a keen eye and know what you're looking for. There's no big battery to give it away, and the design is pretty discreet. Like I said, it really just looks like a journeyer, unless you notice the hub drive system on the rear wheel, which I'll discuss in a minute. The Confluence is priced reasonably and offered in four build options. Two with drop bars and two with flat bar configurations. The most budget-friendly version comes in at $24.99 with the Shimano Altus 1x9 drivetrain. Then there are two models priced at $29.99. Another flat bar version, this time with the Shimano Q's 11-speed drivetrain. And a drop bar version with the SRAM Apex 1x11 drivetrain. The top of the line model comes with drop bars and a Shimano GRX 600 2x11 drivetrain. The price for this one is $34.99. All of the models should be landing in bike shops right around when this video comes out, except for the GRX 600 model, which is slated to arrive in April. If you're curious about weight, Salsa claims 31.9 pounds or 14.5 kilos for an Apex model in a 55 centimeter size. Not too bad for an e-bike. For comparison, this is 9.7 pounds or 4.4 kilos heavier than the comparable Journeyer model. All versions feature an aluminum alloy frame with maximum tire clearance of 700 by 50 millimeters. But the bikes come spec'd with 42s. It has fender and rack mounts, as well as plenty of options for fitting bottle and cargo cages on the frame and fork. You can also easily bolt a kickstand to it, which is pretty cool for those planning to commute. It's also worth noting that it has a 27.2 seat post diameter and it's compatible with internally routed dropper posts. Kind of nice for an entry-level bike, and it shows they're expecting folks to get a little rowdy. As far as fit, Salsa says it can accommodate a variety of riders from 4'8 all the way up to 6'5. Again, their goal is to get more butts on bikes, so this means including as many body types as possible. To aid with this, they're releasing six drop bar sizes. 49, 51, 53, 55, 57, and 60 centimeters. And then there's five flat bar sizes as well. Extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. So yeah, lots of sizing options. Regarding geometry, it's basically identical to the Journeyer. Stack, reach, and standover are all the same, as well as 440 millimeter chainstays. Seat tube angles are 73 to 76 degrees, depending on the size, and this is also the same as the Journeyer. The only main difference in geometry is found at the head tube, which is one degree slacker at 68.5 degrees. Salsa reasons that this should add a little more confidence and stability, riding at the higher speeds associated with e-bikes. Overall, it seems like newcomers to cycling, as well as seasoned vets, should be stoked on the ride quality and comfort of this bike. Lastly, I'll touch on the electrical side of things. The Confluence is a class one e-bike, meaning there's no throttle, it's pedal assist only, and it delivers a maximum assisted speed of 20 miles an hour or 32 kilometers an hour. As I mentioned, one of Salsa's goals was to put out an understated e-bike that looks as much like a real bike as possible. For this reason, and to keep the bike more affordable, they chose a hub drive motor. And for the Confluence, they went with Male's X35 Plus system. The motor can put out 40 newton meters of maximum torque and 250 watts of maximum power. For those unfamiliar with Male, they're a large automotive company based in Spain. 
They have a specific e-bike division with a pedigree and hub drive systems. They've been doing it for years and they work with bike manufacturers all over the world. Mollet also designs and builds their products in-house and they have complete control over the supply chain. QBP, which is Salsa's parent company, will support the brand and act as an authorized service center. This means consumers should have peace of mind if something goes wrong with the motor or battery. The range of e-bikes will always be variable, depending on terrain, rider weight, and other factors. But Salsa is estimating around 45 miles per charge with the included 245 watt hour battery. There's a charging port just above the bottom bracket area, and the battery itself is integrated and hard mounted inside the frame. This means removing it requires pulling the bottom bracket and some other hassles probably best left for your local bike shop. Salsa says they did this to reduce points of failure on the bike and to negate associated rattling. To be clear, there is no battery door, so you can't just pop the battery on and off for charging like with many other bikes. Essentially, you have to plug the bike into an outlet to charge it. You can, however, purchase a 208 watt hour extender, which almost doubles the battery life and therefore the range. It looks like a big bottle and it can be mounted in the center triangle in lieu of a cage. Salsa also integrated Male's low-key iWalk unit on the top tube. This controls all the electronics. There's also a phone app available for system customization and to check stats. So that's the nitty gritty of Salsa Cycle's first foray into the e-bike realm. What do you think? Is this something you'd be interested in? What do you like and what seems iffy? Let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this quick peek at the new Confluence and you found some merit in this video. If so, please like and share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post new content. And if you're already subscribed, please consider joining and becoming a channel member. You'll gain access to members only videos and other fun perks. Quick shout out to all you Patreon and channel members that keep this little channel alive. Thank you so much and until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.